Hello, welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. So if you're in a circus and you're on the tightrope walk, then maybe don't listen to you're safely at the other end of that particular journey. Now, um, just to remind you, I have other podcasts. I've actually got 45 podcasts now. I found some old stuff from the past. It's not going to be from the future, is it? But yeah, I've got some old stuff. Um, so I stuck it on my Spreaker podcast. So that's the only place. Well, it's not the only place. It's it's the home of my podcasts is Spreaker. Um, just go to Spreaker.com and just put my name in and you'll find me very easily. I'm also available on lots of different podcast hosts like uh, Spotify, Apple, uh, iTunes, I don't know, lots of different ones, Google, Google Podcasts, I was going to say too many to mention but it's more a case of too mentioned to be asked with mentioning or too many to remember there's a few there's quite a few different podcasts basically any podcast host or podcast directory should have me on there pretty much so I've got quite a few new podcasts one is called Hypno Chats, uh, which I did a few years back. I think there's about 20 of those. I've uh, got Healing Words, that's one, another one I did. And uh, I can't remember the others. But uh, I've got other sleep podcasts. One is Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis, which is my most popular podcast. And I've got Sleep Hypnosis Weekly, that's another popular podcast. And there's this one, of course. And then, what other ones? Oh, yeah, Anxiety. So, Hypnosis for Hypnosis Relaxation for Anxiety, Stress, and Panic Attacks. That's another one that's become popular, plus 40 others, so there's quite a few. Uh, so it's been really, I'm going to talk about the weather, it's been hot, and I kind of... At, at one point earlier, I felt like I'd wrung myself out. You know, you get a like a wet flannel and you wring it out, and it just all the water comes out. That's what I felt like. Like all this just perspiration. And at one point, I was sitting in my chair. I had my t-shirt off, and I'm just like reclined. I was watching telly, and I had this little glistle this little uh, like shining thing on my body and I look down and in my chest in the middle of my chest there's like a little because I'm so muscular because my bosoms are so firm and perky there's like a a middle bit which is like a little 
dent, I suppose, a little dent bit. And there's like a little puddle there. Like a little little miniature swimming pool. Where the, the sweat had been, like, collecting. Very strange. And I kind of moved. And uh, it sort of started to drip down, but... I could, you know, I kind of, why, why was it not going all the way down? But then it's my belly in it. I guess the, uh, the droplets of sweat didn't have any mountaineering gear to help it, you know, climb my belly. So I wasn't able to collect and congregate. Because I probably said, let's all meet in the belly button. But I didn't get a chance. I have a nice little rest in the peak. The Peak District, the belly button. I've got a nice belly button actually. The thing is, you know, what people say, is in it out to you an innie? If you've got a belly on you, every belly button's an innie. There are no outy, outy belly buttons if you've got a, a beer belly, which I kind of, I've got. Andre's asleep. It's really weird, and I don't quite know what's going on with him. But I know his heat is getting overheated, and uh, he's now in the bedroom, sleeping inside a carrier bag, which seems like a weird place to sleep. He loves sleeping in bags. He loves bags, but. I wouldn't have thought it would be particularly cool inside a carrier bag, but maybe it is. He knows what he wants. He doesn't do anything he doesn't like. So if it wasn't comfortable, he'd move. He's he's not, you know... He won't do anything unless he wants to do it. So what I've been doing, because he's been... What he does is, when he's hot, he lays flat on the ground. I guess he's kind of trying to... Because the ground, um, you know, on the carpet is probably a lot cooler than it is elsewhere, maybe. So what I've been doing is, I've got his little brush that I use to brush him through. To brush his, his coat. And I've been putting the brush under the cold tap and then just brushing through... Uh, basically sort of trying to cover his whole body just to cool him down but he doesn't like water he's got an aversion to any kind of cleanliness it's just <laughs> he's he's allergic to, to washing and water for some reason but what's weird is when we go out he'll do absolutely everything to avoid walking through a puddle so he just won't he won't do it but he's got no no problem if it rains he will happily walk through the rain and get completely drenched does not care and he will still avoid all the puddles it's weird he's such a weirdo I don't know why I remember once it was 1995. Uh, I was walking. It was a fair distance actually, but it was it was summer. Probably July, maybe August, maybe June. You know those kind of months. It was very hot. But it was raining, but it wasn't like normal rain. It was full on rain you know you walk you know it's the kind of rain that if you went out to put your rubbish out and you went outside for you know 20 seconds you'd come back and you were drenched that kind of and I was walking to the shops and I was in a bit of a mood and I was just walking it off and I was absolutely drenched. And I just had a t-shirt on and probably some jeans and stuff. 
and it felt really nice. Like really, really felt nice. And, you know, those are the days when I looked okay in a wet t-shirt because I was very, very slim and I suppose muscular, you know, just like a standard 25-year-old or 24-year-old person, you know, I just didn't have really any fat on me, I was just... I'm not saying that I looked especially amazing and I don't think I'd have won any awards. I might have done. You know, if there's some such a thing as a walking in the rain trophy, then I might have won that, but and I remember I was walking down there and I'm I just recollect because an ex-girlfriend was also walking but she was walking the other way and I guess it was so raining so hard we couldn't really see in front of each other for too far so neither of us had time to cross the road to avoid each other and I remember just standing there talking to her bit awkward, you know, it's like, and she was going, and, you know, it was, and afterwards, you know, in reflection, maybe, maybe we had communication issues, I don't know, but, <laughs> we, um, I remember just standing there being absolutely soaked and well, it felt nice until I saw her because you know I was sort of in my own little world really and I was brought back to to uh, reality but I just remember that feeling of the rain just hitting my scalp and my face and my body and it's like a big kind of massage just massaging my body and it's oh it's lovely and my t-shirt was clinging to well just clinging to my body it was all right I think it's in them days I was embarrassed about being so slim I mean, the idea of being uh, slim like that, I, don't, I still wouldn't want to be that slim again, to be fair. But I think I'd quite like to maybe be halfway in between that and here. You know? Maybe. So instead of being, I don't know. 15 stone, maybe get down to 13. I was thinking earlier actually when I was walking Andre, I'd probably be okay. It's not really a weight issue with me, it's more a, a distribution of the, you know, all the huge amount of muscle that I have. If I had less muscle in my stomach and kind of managed to sort of spread it maybe to my boobies and my shoulders, my back and I don't know, my thighs and my calves and my, my knuckles and you know, just basically just spread the muscle out. Maybe my ears could be a little bit bigger, it wouldn't matter, so just a little bit. Maybe my forehead could be a little bit more. You know, not like an ape, but just, just a little bit like a like cavemen. They show cavemen, don't they? Neanderthal, like cavemen as having like really big foreheads. But isn't that a sign of a big brain? I mean, you know, but 
when I say big forehead, I'm not talking elephant man, but but isn't that a sign of a, a big brain? That's a, I mean, apparently, uh, I don't know, I think this is true, I, t I studied this. Obviously, all men and women are going to have different size everything, and no, no one's the same, and you know, but in a generalization, it always used to be thought that because men had bigger heads than women, generally, that men had larger brains. Well, actually, it's not the case. It's just that women's brains are closer to their skull. The same size brains, but men have got more liquid between the brain and the skull, and women have got less gap for manoeuvre. Not manoeuvre, that's wrong. We're talking about driving now, parallel parking. No, but... So they've got the same brain, not the same brain, but the same size brain as men. But there's just less room. It's more cosy, more compact. But men's is just more... It's not the same size. Less of it is used, clearly, I would say. <laughs> controversial I'd say probably women's brains are more active like I think I'd say that more perhaps men are more like very developed in like certain parts of the brain yet women develop more of the brain more different parts of the brain you know, speech and emotion, <laughs> emotions and ability to express emotions, ability to communicate and, you know, those generalizations. And men, uh, I don't know. It's really hard, I don't, I'm not big on generalizations as such. But they are handy, especially with if you want to annoy people and be prejudiced. Generalizations are great for that. But also, if we never generalize, then I don't know. There'd, there'd be no studies. There'd be no no theories about anything, would there? Really. It's like everybody is completely different. That's it. And it's like, well, but we want to kind of know that, you know, it's. I think most studies, especially psychological studies, it doesn't take. It doesn't take a three-year research study or a book called Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Egypt or whatever that was and book to know that men and women are different. But then women and women are different. Men and men are different. I mean, Andre, he's got a lot of traits, probably of any other ferret, but he does some stuff that I'm pretty sure that no ferret in the world does. And that's probably partly because of me. But he does some weird stuff. And... People are different. I think what it is is that's my squeaky chair. If 
for my observations it seems that some people kind of want to take on a persona of their surroundings take on mannerisms and uh, speech you know ways of speaking and to the point where everything's kind of set to automatic so it's very little to do and I suppose if you're able to learn all that stuff how to behave in a certain way how to act boyish and how to be interested in the same things that other people are interested in and how to have conversations about something that everyone's decided they're going to be interested in and you know in that particular area where you live so let's say if you live in a town where there's a particular football club and it's sort of standard to be or rugby club or golf club or ping pong club or scrabble club whatever it might be to be you know really I suppose I would say pretend to be interested but I suppose it's not pretend if that's what you've learnt to do is it because we believe what we're taught to believe So when does that stop? So someone being excited about, I don't know, a particular sport because that's what they were brought up to be excited about. They were around people that were excited by that thing. And they learnt to laugh at certain things that other people laughed at. They learnt to like the same things that other people liked. Maybe their parents, siblings, uncles, aunts, friends at school. So when does that, when do we become individuals? When do we get to the stage? How can we, how people manage to free themselves from it? When they probably don't want to free themselves from it because they've learnt to love it and therefore they love it. But it wasn't a choice. I mean, no child was born with a favourite football team wearing a scarf for their team. You know, it's it's something that they've been taught to like. Especially in England, it's very it's like the most popular sport in the country is football. And I think that's in America you'd call it soccer. Although the real term is football. And uh, it's quite weird because in America, what you call football, you know, where the, where the big helmets and the big shoulder pads, and they almost look like uh, members of Dynasty running around and they're huge men although I think they are I don't know once they take all that protective gear off they might be in 120 pounds I don't know but they look big and they play for about 30 seconds and then the whistle goes 
and then about 10 adverts go on telly and then they come back and then they play for another 15 seconds and so we don't have sport like that in England everything here is it's kind of you know football matches they show the whole thing you know they have show adverts during the half time so 45 minutes of continuous play regardless of what channel it's on whether it's commercial or uh, you know the BBC and in America maybe in Canada as well I'm not sure but America have uh, they call it football but in England we call it American football and it's very popular here as well there's I got I know someone that's proper fan of American football I really absolutely loves it and in the 90s I think it was the 90s it was brought over here and England started having teams of American football and we still call it American football because it's not football because football is like the round ball and you kick it around um, but it's just one of those differences isn't it in between countries I mean mind you we're becoming very closer to America England, America I mean now we've got Boris Johnson as a Prime Minister there's you know we've, we've got our own uh, charismatic leader who's controversial let's say it's funny but he's controversial not everybody uh, is a big fan of his but he is very very he's the most famous politician in the country long before he became Prime Minister and so we kind of got that it's uh, like a populist a, po a popular Prime Minister it's the first popular Prime Minister we've had since Tony Blair he was really popular before he became a Prime Minister you know he used to have these not rallies, not in the same way as in America. Um, but I remember before Tony Blair became the Prime Minister, he had the like concerts, and it was like, and there was a singer saying, "Things will only get better, get better, ever, ever," something like that, and it was like a really a big deal and really it's full of energy and new labour and we're going to change the change everything and um, yeah it's uh, didn't realise he was going to spend so much of his time on his knees in front of Bush, but never mind. We got uh, we got a new one now. We got. Uh, does anyone remember oh, what was it called? Not Terror Cats, was it Terror Cats? I'll think about it. Oh, Zelda. Zelda I'm sure there was like a a puppet and it might have been like Thunderbirds but it wasn't Thunderbirds it was 
terror hawks or something like that or thunderbirds no did I just say it wasn't thunderbirds but there was I'm sure it was a lady called terror maybe it was terror birds no terror something but there was a lady called Zelda and our previous Prime Minister just reminded me of her what other Prime Ministers we have oh yeah we had Gordon Bran Gordon Bran he was uh, basically he was a Chancellor I think he was yeah he was Chancellor before Blair while Blair was a Prime Minister um, but I suppose you know I mean Blair bent over backwards to please uh, President Bush he really did everything he could he uh, he did he did did a lot to help him and uh, Gordon Brown silently without anyone kind of really noticing because he's Scottish what he did is he he kind of got lots of really good things for Scotland like you know just and then he became Prime Minister as well for, for a little while so in Scotland and for my Scottish uh, listeners I love you baby because what you've got I think we should all have I think it would be it's a brilliant thing that you've got it and everyone in the UK should have this but there's no prescription charges in Scotland and they don't have uh, tuition fees unless that's changed but coming out of being you know a student or previous student with I think I've got £26,000 debt and my student thing is going up by about 60 to £80 a month every month uh, so by the time I'm well you just imagine it's going up you know a thousand what a thousand pound a year so it's it'd be nice not to have had that and free prescriptions what an amazing thing I mean I do I do get them free so I can't complain and but you know I've kind of think of other people and it's kind of weird because I was quite fortunate because when I finished my degree I was only paying not paying I didn't pay it but I was being charged three grand a year tuition fees plus I had a maintenance loan and everything like that on top but three grand a year the year after I finished the tuition fees went up to nine thousand a year which meant I would have had what does that work out six three six nine so it's six twelve eighteen plus twenty six so it's twenty six thirty six forty six forty four forty four thousand pounds worth of debt I'd have so that'd probably be £150 a month interest added on every month if I'd have had the nine grand debt a year so yeah I was lucky to avoid that but I'd be even luckier if I'd been in, born in Scotland apart from the fact that it's a beautiful place to live plus it's cooler as well I've got a friend who's in Scotland at the moment and he didn't get the heat that we've had and I was like oh so jealous so but it's so nice to just have some 
coolness. Although it was breezy, at one point, like this evening, I took Andre for a walk about 8 o'clock this evening. And I was walking through the park, and I just got this gust of wind. And I just stood there. And I just, oh, it was beautiful. It was just, you know, that's why I need... I need to slim down. I'm not even particularly bothered about my health, really, as much as... I want to be able to take my T-shirt off. I don't want to walk around. You know, I say I'll have a... I'll have a you know, bikini top on or something, but I'd just like to be able to... It would have been lovely just to feel that breeze against my belly button. Just clear out some of the dust and stuff that would have been lovely so I had to make do with just my face but that was nice really so I'm going to start doing sit ups over the last few weeks I've been doing weights and I go through little periods when I like, perhaps I watch a TV program on telly, like a film. I watched a film called Brotherhood. And that was on at eleven o'clock. Actually, I started watching it at twelve because I took Andre for a walk later on with my friend, and so I watched Brotherhood, and it was on for about two hours. It was quite a long film. And every advert, I'd go into my bedroom and I'd do some weights. I'd like do some, just some biceps, uh, some push up, you know, sort of my shoulders and some stuff my back. And uh, but it was nice. It just felt quite nice to I've done a bit of weights and also got my punch bag. So I'm on that every day. So I'm feeling. Like I can like tense my muscles and I'm a little bit more muscular, just it feels a bit nicer, you know. But it's my stomach. It's just that's the thing. I think the rest of me. I can't see the back of me, so I've got no idea. And I've said this before. I might. I might have a really big fat back. I don't know. Maybe that's it. The rest of me. The front of me looks alright, but I might just have this just... I might have a beer belly on my back. I don't, you know, like a... Instead of a hunchback, a hunch lower back. So I might be walking around and people think that I'm walking backwards. Or walking forwards. Or, yeah, I don't know. So... I might have a really big bum, but I don't know. That might be why the chair keeps squeaking. It's just like, it's sighing. It's gone, ouch, ouch, please get off. Get off. What's this elephant doing on the chair again? Oh. But I don't know, because I can't see my bum. I can't see it. I don't know. I don't know. If, well, I do know it's there, obviously. I don't even know if it's still there, but it is. Because I, I use it, but I don't, I don't know if it's huge. I'm on a massive bomb. Wow, I might walk down the street and it might just be wobbling, and I don't even know about it. Not that it matters. I mean, I don't think it's. Yeah, it doesn't that doesn't really matter, but. I kind of like to know it's like you know I think if I was going to go into town I'd like to know if I had a bogey hanging out of my nose I'd, you know it'd be just nice to know so I can once I know it's there I can decide whether to get rid of it or leave it there you know it depends if Depends, I might be about to go on to a first date or a blind date with someone and 
so I might just tuck it back inside you know so if, I, if they turn up I don't like them I can just breathe out through me no, you know breathe out from my nostril and get the bogey like sticking out again <laughs> that's one way to ruin the day I don't know it's probably a bit childish really Oh, is another thing you know the open university the open university is very old I think it's been going since the 70s maybe earlier and it's an it used to be uh, well what's the right term well, it's online now but it used to be uh, you'd do it by post so you'd you'd get the the books, uh, the coursework, textbooks, all by post, and then you'd send in your essays by post. You know, it'd all be done by post, and maybe on the telephone as well. But you know, in recent years, it's online. Now there was a time when the courses were really really cheap really cheap and doing a degree was free you could do an open university degree 20 years ago and it was free it didn't cost anything at all and then you know now you you know you can get uh, student loans to cover the cost but you still got to pay it back and even now it's a lot cheaper than the nine grand that it would cost if you went to university but it should be cheaper because it's done online and it's uh, it doesn't you know it can't cost that much per student to run an online course compared to a university I like you know but the courses are still quite a lot of money though it's still going to cost you maybe four grand a year if you do a couple of modules so it's still you know still a fair bit of money but the courses let's say you got a course and it's £1,800 which was I was going to do a course on mental health uh, I was quite interested in doing a master's degree in mental health because it's a subject that's close to my mind no pun intended and I just I looked into it and one of the courses I think it was 60 points or it might be 30 credits or 60 but it was £1,800 or 2,400 something like that if you were in England if you were overseas it's even more why I've got no idea it's online it shouldn't make any difference where you live what difference does it make but it's I mean, it's a government thing they like to make more money out of foreign students yet yeah. doesn't really make sense to me because if a foreign student comes to live in the country to study why charge them more when actually they're going to be spending money when they're here Well, there's a lot of noise outside. What well, that's about? Surely they wouldn't be having music blaring out at six o'clock in the morning. I'll have to have a little look out there. It might just be someone getting into their car. 
It's quite weird, even though I'm awake, I still want to go out and complain. <laughs> How dare you have your music playing at six o'clock in the morning? You know, I'm trying to trying to get ready to go to bed in a minute. So yeah, anyway, the Open University. This course was actually half the price if you live in Scotland. Half the price. I was like, what? It doesn't even make sense. Why? It's like, uh. I don't want it to complain. I want it to just, like, what? Why should it be cheaper? Why should it matter where you live in the world? It's an online course. It shouldn't matter if you live in Canada or... Timbuktu and there is such a place apparently that's Canada it really is how many bears live in Canada I've never seen a bear not a proper bear I've seen a bear but you know in a zoo but it wasn't nice because bears are supposed to be wild I mean they're big, big animals. Big, huge animals. And you see a bear in a zoo, is like just crouching down, just looking up at you, like, meh. Saying that, I wouldn't want to see a bear. Imagine I'd camp in and have a tin of beans. I want to see a bear. I'm no, when I was in Bulgaria, we were told that there's bears and there's a lot of bears in Bulgaria. And we'd be on the snow lift or the ski lift and it creaked, creaked worse, worse than my big black squeaky chair. And, I, and it was so quiet. And all you'd hear is, like that. And it's like, huh. I hope we survive this. You know, I don't really want to ski that badly. Although I wasn't skiing, I was uh, snowboarding. I use the term very, very loosely. I was uh, pretending to snowboard when in fact what I was really doing was falling over and travelling down a mountain on my face. So that was a very strange experience. The best part of being in Bulgaria was being in a hotel while the friends that I was on holiday with were on the mountain and I could spend the whole day without them that gives you an idea of my character I preferred it I spent time with the staff with the waitresses the bar staff and just chilling out having a few drinks watching telly and I'd have preferred just to visit the surrounding towns and just get to see what it was like to live there. No interest in skiing. Just why? If I lived on a mountain 
and the best way to travel the safest way to travel was by attaching a tennis racket to my feet then I'd, you know, I'd probably do it but I don't live on a mountain it really snows where I live in fact last year I don't think I saw any snow or last winter So yeah, I don't know, just no tuition fees would be really good. I'd like to do a master's, I'd like to do a, I'd like to be a doctor of hypnosis, that would be groovy. But. I would say in some ways I'm probably I don't know quite a high level of kind of a high level of understanding of hypnosis the history the, the various techniques although I don't necessarily use a lot of them I kind of got my own way of doing things but I'd say I kind of understand the subject quite deeply and I'm able to see the connection hypnosis has to you know the self-help generation the motivational speakers various psychotherapies counselling you know just it's endless really meditations there's so many strands that has a connection to hypnosis I saw something very interesting yesterday I watched a documentary and uh, Mr. Nobel the man who created the Nobel Prize and it's, it's one of the most prestigious presti prestige uh, prizes in the world you know you've got the Nobel Prize for various different things literature um, I think science but definitely the peace the Nobel Peace Prize which is the the biggest one unless of course you write books and I suppose the literature one is the biggest one but the uh, the Nobel Peace Prize is yeah, very famous the Nobel Peace Prize Nobel the man who created dynamite the Nobel Peace Prize the Nobel Peace Prize named after the man who invented dynamite the precursor to yeah, everything that came afterwards that's a very vague statement isn't it what was what was it oh it's a precursor precursor to what everything that came afterwards oh it makes sense yes it yeah it's meaningless mm. So yeah, I've made a couple of recordings today. <laughs> I did a deep sleep whisper recording. I think I did two yesterday. I did let me boy to sleep and a deep sleep whisper. And today I have done 
deep sleep whisper I've done a sleep hypnosis weekly and now I have done this let me bore you to sleep number 100 and I think it, it might be 180 not a hundred percent sure I'm 180 percent sure I don't know I think it's 180 which is pretty groovy I should do something extra special for the 200th episode I don't know what though so we're only 20 away so that would be potentially next month sometime what would you like me to do for the, the 200th episode I suppose I could do a live broadcast a live recording maybe 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 you could do it on YouTube or, or Facebook or I don't know Andre, sorry about that, Andre's still in the other room. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, uh, things are groovy as always, always oh, groovy, 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 boovy. And for some reason, the now a toenail on my right big toe has grown quicker than the toenail on my left big toe and I don't understand why that is because all the other toenails is kind of the same length as each other and I don't recollect when I did cut my toenails I don't recollect there being any significant difference in each particular length because well, I'm not an expert toenail clipper and by no I don't measure my toenails when I'm in the bathroom that's not what the tape measures for so as far as I'm concerned they were the same length yet the right toenail on the right big toe is more expensive than the left big toe toenail and it's not to a point of being problematic or even conversation worthy really although it's always good to have something to talk about you know if I ever have to have another job interview in the future but the right one is it's just grown faster and I don't understand why I quite like my big toes although Uh, they are big they're very different I think the right one seems to have more movement than the left one I suppose it could be I mean you could be right handed and left handed maybe I'm right right toed not so much right footed but I just my big toe is more I'm right big toed instead of left big toed doesn't seem to be a lot of difference with the other toes yeah I think I'm probably right right toed for all of them apart from one toe on my left 
foot the one next to the big toe uh, maybe it's kind of equal I look at the toes and they just look strange even though they're just toes they're a bit wonky it's a bit like you know when you look at a word you write down something and the word just doesn't look right even though you've spelt it right it's correct and you've spelt that, that word yeah, thousands of times before and for some reason it just doesn't look right that's what I'm getting with my toes I've seen well I haven't seen them well I probably have seen them thousands of times I don't spend huge amounts of time looking at them it's not a a subject of too much interest personally but they just look a bit look a bit wonky the right toes and it's, there's quite a gap between the right, the big toe, and the next toe. There's a big old gap. A bit like, you know, Spock. When he does his uh, be peaceful and prosper, or whatever, you know, with his hands, and he. Also, I think uh, Mork, from Mork and Mindy, went out nanu nanu, and he had his hands. It's a bit like that. Like naturally there's a little gap. Mind the gap. Mind the toes. Yeah. Now you can't tell me that was anything but boring. So I'm going to go. Hopefully you've been bored to sleep. And I'll speak to you next time. Lots of love. Bye-bye.